All right, welcome back, everybody. I hope you enjoyed the last video of going through the CDU and how to properly, well, how to get started on setting up a, a simple flight plan. Again, this is without VNAV. If we were going to do VNAV, we would enter in our, our VNAV information here, right? And, and VNAV is basically it's vertical navigation. So you can set this thing up to where the airplane will completely fly itself and do all of its descending, your speed, and everything else for you. Uh, this is a lot more versatile in the Zebo Mod 737 from what I've noticed. And it kind of calculates and does everything for you, which is super nice. And we can go over that one too. So basically, I've taken off from Foley, 5R4, and I have set my altitude to 18,000 feet. And I have engaged the autopilot and have engaged altitude select. So when you're in a climb, the best way to do this is to go ahead and before you turn the autopilot on, which is right here, the autopilot engage, the best thing to do while you're in a nose up climb is hit altitude select after you've programmed your altitude in here and then hit autopilot engage. And what this keeps this aircraft from doing is porpoising. <laughs> so it'll actually kind of go into a real quick descent and then back up. So I'd recommend doing that while your nose up in a climb for a, kind of a nice smooth transition there. And right now I've got us on heading. So I'm gonna pull a couple of screens up here so you can see what we're doing, right? Cause I wanna focus on, on these buttons on the panels below instead of just focusing on on the the main cockpit itself so what do these do all right so right now we're just kind of we're just kind of flying we're not in a we're not in a turn right out now but what what if we want to turn so right here we've got the heading and right here we've got, sorry, the course, right? We're not going to change the course because we're using GPS to fly with. Okay. We're not, we're not using our, our normal regular navigation radios. So obviously we need to make a right hand turn to kind of get back on course. So I'm just going to click this and then tap heading here. And as you notice, the aircraft starts to make a turn towards that selected heading. And it does it very fast. <laughs> Perfect. We're about to intercept our track here. So as we intercept it, you're going to see on this localizer needle that it's going to start crossing to the left. All right. So we have intercepted it now and we have gone past it. Great. So what do we do? Well, after we have used the course active here, now we have nothing. We'll hit it again. That'll bring us to VOR1. So now if we were messing with the VOR and we wanted to set our course, we could do it this way too. Now, what if you're flying straight and you're like, well, you know, I don't really want to hold my mouse button down and keep twisting this knob. You could just hit this right here on top. And should take you to the course that you have programmed in there. So the one I have programmed in there is not where we're going. <laughs> so if you have something programmed in and it's far ahead of you or behind you, you can just hit course direct and it will point to it. So in this case, we're just going to use the mouse to twist the knob to change this just for demonstration. So we can hit this again. Right. If we had a second VOR, we could set that up too. Again, use the same course knob to change that, but we're not. We're going to use FMS one, which is our GPS. And it doesn't matter what we do with the course knob. It's, it's not going to change, right? Cause it's fixated on a pre-programmed track that we programmed with the CDU here. So how do we get on this course? We're, we have drifted off quite a ways. Well, it's really easy. Undo heading. Click nav. Beautiful. And then we'll start turning. 
So when I close these, except for this one, we'll leave this one here. So you can have a superimposed view of what's going on outside. And we are a thousand feet, a little, a little over a thousand feet from our cruising altitude of 18,000 feet. So one of the things you have to pay attention with, we'll go over this real quick, is your ITT. So at lower altitudes, your, your torque becomes a limiting factor. At higher altitudes, your ITT becomes a limiting factor. I would say the throttle is probably about three quarters of the way. It's not completely full. And in a cruise, I like to pull the throttles back to about 1500 RPMs. So we could actually pull it down to about 1600. And basically what we're doing when we pull the throttle or I'm sorry, the prop pitch back is we are changing the propeller pitch from fine to coarse. So we want a coarse pitch at cruise speed because we're taking a larger bite out of the air. At the lower altitudes, when we are doing takeoffs and landings, we want to put our prop pitch all the way up because whenever we increase torque with a finer prop pitch, you get a lot more and a lot quicker response out of your throttle. So with a coarse uh, pitch, we don't get as quick as quick of a response. And also too, you don't have to worry so much because when you reduce your prop pitch, you're also putting more strain here. So if you notice, as we increase prop pitch, our ITT goes down. And our torque does the same. So we're gonna we're gonna go to 15 now that we're coming into cruise. And good rule of thumb is you can see by this thick line here. Don't go under 15. Just don't do it. Because if you did do it, um, you can have a lot of problems. And that's it. We're up at cruise altitude now. My computer's a little laggy. I need a new one. So I apologize for that. And there's the autopilot panel. Okay, what if you want to say, eh, I don't really like 18,000 feet. Let's go down to 17,000 feet. Perfect. Put your 17,000 feet right here. And then what you want to do is come over to the autopilot panel. And click descend right here. Descend. So anytime you make an altitude change, Right, what you want to do if you're climbing is you come to the autopilot panel, hit climb after you've made your change up there. If you want to descend, you make your change and then hit descend. And what that will do is bring us down to 17,000 feet and level off. So we're 167 miles from LaGrange. Thanks again for watching the video. I hope this helped a lot of you out. I would like to get another video going of how to actually program and set up vertical navigation in this aircraft. That's going to take a little longer to do. And I also need to look up the approach plates for these arrivals and approaches and try and try and, and get a better idea of, of what that calls for. So, they have a couple of them pre-programmed in here, but obviously we want to do it for the entire phase of the flight. So anyway, thanks a lot, and we will see you next time.